now we're gonna look at a, a example that's that is very important it's gonna sum everything together and it's gonna show up over and over again in future lectures so let's suppose a particle of mass m of course is in a quantum state is in uh, the state psi of x and t so this is the state of this particle psi is the wave function the wave function is everything you need to know about this particle its future its its past its present its behavior every single piece of information is is inside this wave function for this particular example the wave function is given by the following so i of x and t is some constant a times exponential to minus a times m x squared divided by h bar where h bar is just a number plus i t so this is the wave function we're gonna try to find four things the first thing we're gonna find a this big a we're gonna find this a in terms of uh, we know we're just gonna find it so this is the normalization constant so this wave function okay there exists some potential function v of x where this v of x satisfy yeah satisfy the Schrodinger equation so we have to find this v of x that satisfies the Schrodinger equation and then we're gonna calculate the expectation value of x the expectation value of x squared the expectation value of the momentum and the expectation value of the momentum squared and finally we're gonna find the standard deviation in x where x is the position okay and the standard deviation of p which is the momentum so let's get started let's find the normalization constant a so we know that if we integrate the probability density over all space we should get one this is one of the fundamental laws of, of statistical mechanics the particle must exist somewhere in the universe so what is this uh, probability density in terms of our function psi the normalization for psi is gonna be the integral the summation from negative infinity to infinity psi of x and t times psi star of x and t dx where psi star is the complex conjugate of psi which means that for every imaginary part in psi you just need to flip its sign so our function here on the side has the term plus i t psi star we just have to change this plus to a minus and then you're gonna have psi star so if we do this this must be equal to one this is the normalization right so one equal two times the magnitude square of a or a times a conjugate because a is just a constant so it can be a complex number the integral from zero to infinity zero because I have two here so e to the minus two a m x squared divided by h bar dx you may ask where's the, t the time part of the function where did it go it cancels out 
when psi get multiplied by its complex conjugate we get e to the zero and that's one so we're not gonna bother with it so simplifying a little bit, a little bit further we have this integral gonna give us two magnitude square of a times one half times the square root of pi divided by 2a m divided by h bar simplifying and solving for a we get a to be 2 m a divided by pi h bar ignore this i h bar uh, to the one fourth the fourth root of this so there you have it this is the normalization constant the second part we have to find the potential function that satisfies the Schrodinger equation before that let's look at the Schrodinger equation the Schrodinger equation has i h bar the time derivative of psi must equal minus i minus h bar square divided by 2m times the second partial derivative with respect to x of psi plus some potential function we did know times psi so we have to find this potential function that satisfy this equation for the psi we have this is one dimension uh, Schrodinger equation so what what do we have we have this piece here time derivative and we have two derivatives in terms of x and of psi in terms of x so the first derivative the first partial derivative of psi with respect to time is just minus i times a times psi first derivative with respect to x equals minus 2 a m x divided by h bar times psi and we 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 have to have, have two two derivatives not one so we have to differentiate again the second derivatives will give us minus 2 a m divided by h bar times 1 minus 2 a m x square divided by h bar times psi psi must come back it's exponential function it always spits itself back so we have two, two derivatives of x one derivative of t we can now plug them in and try to find the v so it, we have v times psi equals i h bar times minus i times a times psi this is the time piece plus h bar square divided by 2m times minus 2 a m divided by h bar times 1 minus 2 a m x square divided by h bar times psi factor out psi and putting things together we have h bar a minus h bar a times 1 minus 2 a m x squared divided by h bar times psi this must be equal to 2 a squared m x squared psi Therefore, V must equal 
to um, a square x square. So this is v of x. This v of x satisfies the Schrodinger equation from the previous slide. The third part of the problem is to find the expectation value of x. So we're gonna sandwich this x between psi star and psi. But what is psi star psi? This is a Gaussian, right? A Gaussian with one x give us an odd integral. And what do we know about odd integrals? Uh, uh, yeah, what's the value of odd integrals? You got it, it's zero. This is gonna save you a lot of time if you're gonna do these problems. The expectation value of x squared, this is not zero because it's an even integral. I'm gonna break this integral to two and uh, integrate from zero to infinity. The magnitude square of a, which we have, times the integral from zero to infinity of x squared times e to the minus 2a m x squared divided by h bar dx doing this integral we can use the integration tables uh, to do this integral it's not uh, it's not an easy one but it's doable. So we have 2 times magnitude square of a times 1 divided by 2 square times 2 a m divided by h bar times the square root of pi h bar divided by 2 a m. Simplifying a little bit further, we have the average of x squared is h bar divided by 4am. If you want to practice your algebra skills, you can like go to each one of these tips and actually do it. I'm skipping it because there we have like more important things to cover. It's like how to do these things, how to manipulate these expectation values. It's probably more important than the math. So, go ahead and do the math by yourself. What is the expectation value of the momentum? Well, what is the momentum? Momentum is, is, is the same as mass times uh, velocity, but we're taking the averages, so mass times the average velocity, which is the same as mass times the derivative of x, right? The time derivative. So what is the time derivative of zero? That's zero, so the whole thing is zero. What is the expectation value of p square? So, it's the integral of psi star times h bar divided by i Sorry, this is this is outside times psi dx. So going a little bit further, we have minus h bar square times the integral of psi star times the second derivative of psi with respect to x. The reason why I said sandwich the x and the x square is now. If you look at this, if you put this p outside here, if you put this p outside, you're gonna be ending up taking the second partial derivative of psi star psi, which is wrong. 
you need to take the second partial derivative of psi by itself. That's why it's important to sandwich your operator, to sandwich this P. So going a little bit further, we got minus h bar square times the derivative of psi star times we know that we just we just figured it out in the previous point divide by h bar times 1 minus 2 a m x square divide by h bar times psi dx Now we have simplifying a little bit more we get 2 a m h bar times the integral of psi star I mean psi, uh, magnitude square same thing psi star psi or this same thing minus 2 a m divided by h bar times the integral of x squared psi magnitude square dx which is equal to 2 a m h bar times 1 this is 1, right? This is the integral of psi star psi. This must be equal to 1 times 2 a m divided by h bar. This piece here is the expectation value of x square. Right? And we know that. We have it. So, going uh, simplifying a little bit further, we have... Uh, 2 a m h bar times 1 half and finally the expectation value of p square is equal to a times m times h bar now we almost done now we're gonna find the standard deviation of x which is expectation value of x squared minus the square of the expectation value of x we have both of these doing the math, plugging numbers in, doing simple algebra and taking the square root we get this to be h bar divided by 4a m same thing goes with p this is going to be equal to p square expectation value minus the square of the expectation value of p we also have both of these plugging them in and taking the square root we get expect, uh, sigma of p to be the square root of a m h bar Notice that sigma x and sigma p, x is position, p is momentum, and these two must have must be consistent with the uncertainty principle. So, we if we multiply them, they should be equal to, they should satisfy the uncertainty principle. So let's do that. So x sigma x, sigma p is equal to square root of h bar divided by 4 a m times the square root of a m h bar multiplying for these we get h bar divided by 2 just barely this is consistent with the uncertainty principle 